I'm here today to talk to you about how we prevent known terrorists currently housed in Guantanamo Bay from receiving welfare benefits. There's a two-step plan to do that. The first step is tomorrow during the hearing in the Appropriations Committee for the supplemental. I will have an amendment that has an up or down vote on whether we should allow funding to transfer terrorists to our home territory. Now there has been some talk about how the administration wants to transfer uh, known terrorists to America by closing Guantanamo Bay. Uh, in doing so, he would create a lot of problems, some of which are that tax funder, or taxpayers would have to pay for benefits, for uh, welfare benefits for detainees. So the number one step in this process is to have a clear up or down vote in the Appropriations Committee. Should we allow tax dollars to be spent in transferring known Al-Qaeda and Taliban terrorists to our country with full knowledge that some of them will be released into the general public? Now we have about 240 members of uh, terrorist organizations, mostly Al-Qaeda members, that are housed in Guantanamo Bay. If we close Guantanamo Bay, they will come to some location in America. In Kansas, we don't want them. We don't want them in Fort Leavenworth. We don't want them anywhere in the state. Our governor, our past governor, current Secretary of Health and Human Services, former Governor Sebelius, has said through a letter, please don't bring them to Kansas. Uh, I know that from my own experience, my congressional district, we do not want them in Kansas. But we do know that if they come, that some of them are already scheduled to be released, some 30 members. We don't know who all 30 of them are. And the DNI has already said that if we do release them, we have to help them start a new life. But we know from history, they don't want to start a new life. They want to start, uh, or carry on their old life, carry out attacks. And we have some very good examples of that. If you look at some of those that have been released, we have uh, Mulvay Abdul Ghaffar. He was captured in early 2002 and held in Gitmo for eight months. Upon his release, he became a, a Taliban regional commander in Uzurgan, Uruzgan, and uh, the Helmand provinces. He carried out attacks against our soldiers and Afghan forces. And on the 25th of September 2004, while planning an attack against the Afghan police, Ghaffar and two of his men were killed by the Afghan security forces. We know where he ended up. We also know where uh, other, uh, about uh, 30 of them, or excuse me, 61 of them ended up. They ended up carrying on their old lifestyle of plotting and uh, conducting attacks against our own citizens, our troops. So it's um, my first plan to have an up or down vote in the Appropriations Committee tomorrow on whether we should fund this or allow any tax dollars to fund this. Uh, we certainly do not want them receiving welfare benefits. It's very important that we prevent that from happening. And I have a bill that you've all been, that's been distributed that would prevent that. But phase one, plan A, is to prevent any dollars from being spent on that. Frank Gaffney Jr. is here to uh, talk to us. Uh, Frank is the founder and president of the Center for Security Policy in Washington, D.C. Under Mr. Gaffney's leadership, the center has been nationally and internationally recognized as a resource for timely information and penetrating analysis on foreign and domestic policy matters. Frank has a long distinguished career in government, including Assistant Secretary of Defense for International Security Policy and Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Nuclear Forces and Arms Control Policy. He's also a leading commenter and author on national security issues. Mr. Frank Gaffney. Congressman, thank you very much for your leadership on this issue. We're trying to help President Obama uh, correct a very serious mistake he made on his first day in office, which was to close Guantanamo Bay without any plan for what to do with its inhabitants. Uh, there is now evidence that he is poised to simply release some of them, a group known as Uyghurs out of western China, trained in terrorism in Afghanistan and incarcerated in Guantanamo Bay for years. He intends to release them, we're told, in the general population within spinning distance of this location in Alexandria, Virginia. This is a potential calamity. And frankly, it's not much better to think that there are going to be others like them uh, among what have been called the worst of the worst of the terrorists in the world, to have them inserted into our prison system. We know already that the prison system is a venue for proselytizing and conversion of felons to jihad, to Sharia. It is unlikely to be better 
if you have trained terrorists doing that proselytizing and conversion, that's what will be happening inside our prisons if they are not simply released and are put into uh, penitentiaries. But another consideration, what we have seen Al-Qaeda and its friends do in communities where they can't get at the people inside the prisons is to wage terror against the population in the surrounding areas. They've done that elsewhere around the world. It is a distinct possibility, if not a high probability. That will happen in America if these detainees are moved from the safest prison on the planet, the state-of-the-art detention and interrogation facility in the world today, and are brought over to places that may or may not be as secure, but certainly are not as hard to get to as are the, uh, the facilities now in Guantanamo Bay. In short, Congressman Tirrett's amendment to the supplemental bill is vital. I urge members on both sides of the aisle to help President Obama walk back from this mistake. I'm noting, by the way, that uh, Democrats have already decided not to give him the money he asked for in this bill to begin the closure of Guantanamo Bay. Eighty million dollars that American taxpayers are supposed to spend to close the state-of-the-art, most secure detention and interrogation facility. Democrats didn't want to do that. I hope they will have the courage also to ensure that the people that could remain in that prison are not released in America, either into the general population or even into our prison systems. So thank you, Congressman Tiar. Thank you all for your interest. Right, we have uh, next um, Colin Hanna, the president of Let Freedom Ring, a nonprofit public uh, policy organization committed to promoting constitutional government, free enterprise, and traditional values. Colin is a U.S. Navy veteran and has appeared on Hannity and Combs in situations with Tucker Carlson, Dayside, Fox and Friends, Your World with Neil Cavuto and a big story with John Gibson, special report with Bert Hume and Lou Dobbs report. Mr. Colin Hanna. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, my message today is really very simple. I'm here in three capacities, citizen, veteran, and taxpayer. As a citizen and as a veteran, the thought that detainees, terrorist detainees from Guantanamo Bay would be released into the United States is deeply troubling, offensive, and I think endangers national security. Secondly, the notion that as a taxpayer, American citizens would be asked to pay for welfare benefits for these people who have attacked this country or attempted to do so is absolutely outrageous. And Congressman Tiart's amendment would prevent that outrage from occurring. Stop and think for just a moment. Who would vote against this amendment? Somebody who really, truly wants to go on record as saying, I am for welfare benefits for terrorists, that's crazy. This position, this amendment, would prevent that act of irresponsibility. Thank you. For one more speaker, then we'll take questions. Uh, let me introduce Rosemary Jenks. Uh, Rosemary is the Vice President for Governmental Relations at Numbers USA. Uh, a large and very influential organization here in Washington representing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Americans who care about immigration into this country and uh, will not be amused, I'm sure, at the prospect of uh, terrorists being encouraged to immigrate and then put on welfare to do it. Thank you very much, Frank. Uh, as Frank said, I represent Numbers USA. We have over 900,000 Americans that we represent um, from every congressional district in the country, and these people do not want the Gitmo detainees released into the United States. They don't want one, they don't want ten, they don't want thirty. They do not want them released. Some of their sons and daughters and brothers and sisters actually fought some of these people in the war we sent them to, and to then turn around and tell them that we're going to bring these detainees back to the United States for any reason, let alone to release them into our communities is a slap in the face to our armed services. It's a slap in the face to all Americans who have supported the, the fighting of this war and who know what happens when our immigration system is used to bring terrorists into the United States as it was prior to 9-11. 9-11 is the direct result of our legal immigration system allowing terrorists to use it, to abuse it, 
those vulnerabilities still exist, and we would urge the Obama administration to focus on closing the existing vulnerabilities rather than bringing a whole new group of terrorists into the United States. Thank you. A lot of people in America are wondering what can they do about this problem. There is a phone number, it's a congressional switchboard. They can call, it's 202-224-312 and register their view about welfare benefits for detainees or whether it's just to, to strictly cut the funding to bring people from Gitmo back to America. But the phone number to talk to their member of Congress is 202-224-3121. Be glad to take your questions. Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, that's why we're pressing forward with an amendment tomorrow uh, in the Appropriations Committee to try to bring us to a head early. Uh, these Uyghurs are uh, of Turkish descent. They live in China. They're from China. They will be persecuted back home by the Chinese government, probably uh, put to death. So our government's not going to send them back there. We have a policy. By bringing them back into the United States, the plan is for the Obama administration to give them legal status. They'll have legal status here which will qualify them for food stamps, for health care, for uh, other employment benefits. And I think the question is, are these repentant sinners? And the question is, no, they're not going to change their lifestyle. These are people that have taken a vow to carry out violence. So by bringing them in, uh, it's a real challenge. Why we're doing this tomorrow in Appropriations Committee, rather than working through the regular order of filing a bill and waiting for the House or for the Speaker to assign it to a committee and a subcommittee, and all that long, lengthy process, that's why we're doing an amendment tomorrow, to bring this to a head, so that we can send a message to the Obama administration. We don't want the Uyghurs on the streets. We don't want any terrorist who has taken a vow to destroy our citizens and our way of life to have free access not only to our streets, but to our welfare benefits. So that's why the Emperor down wrote to one. If I may follow up just a moment, um, you said that they're dangerous still. We are hearing, and I was wondering if you could comment from FBI and DHS sources, that they have been deemed to be dangerous still, and that the Obama administration is choosing to ignore them. I, I think that's an accurate statement. We have provided hundreds of millions of dollars to the FBI to find out who in America has been trained by the Taliban or trained by Al-Qaeda or some other source and to track them. That's what we pay the FBI for. So now we're just doing the, exactly the opposite. We're putting people on the streets that we've asked them to go find. At least they, the FBI is getting a head start. But these are known dangerous criminals that have vowed to destroy our way of life and our, our citizens. And for us to think that they're repentant sinners is a false uh, falsehood, and it should be uh, overturned. And one of the way that can be overturned is having people in America call their member of Congress, 202, 224, 3121. Otherwise, it's going to happen. The Obama administration will move forward with this. We'll have terrorists in our territory on our streets within a short amount of time, Congress. whether it's next week or, or later. Congressman, those of us in the press are often admonished when we put a hypothetical question to uh, the Congress. So, well, we can't comment on that because it's a hypothetical. Your whole premise here is based on a hypothetical that the Uyghurs or others will do harm to the United States. I mean, you say they've taken them out. But how do you know that? That is a hypothetical. Well, we know it for a fact that they were uh, apprehended in the course of battle, carrying out actions against our troops. We do know for a fact that of the 500 we've released, 61 of them have been retained in some fashion, actively pursuing against our troops. So I guess I could say that there's at least a 10 in 1 chance, but the fact is some of these that we have released are currently being held in other prisons in other countries. Some of them we just simply can't account for. We know of no repentant sinners of the 500 that we have released. We know of no one who has disavowed their connection to the Al-Qaeda or to, their, uh, to the Taliban or to their belief that this is the great Satan that we're living in. None of them have come forward and said we were wrong. So for us to say, well, this is a hypothetical, well, we know one out of ten for fact. And we have a pretty strong suspect of, of uh, the rest of them, either in prison or unaccounted for. But we do know that none of them have come forward and admitted to their errors, don't we? So I think it's far beyond saying it's just hypothetical. I think it's pretty factual that we have known enemies that we're turning loose on our street. Um, what distinguishes these unlawful combatants who have been incarcerated in Guantanamo Bay, uh, even though they have many different uh, names, obviously, they have different ethnic backgrounds, they come from different countries, um, one thing joins them. 
and that is that they adhere to what authoritative Islam calls Sharia. And as the congressman says, Sharia obligates its adherents to destroy the infidels and to bring about a global theocracy ruled pursuant to Sharia by the caliph. That's the program. Not only have they not disavowed it, they continue to espouse it at every turn. And here's the problem. They may have these Uyghurs in particular that uh, we know are headed towards Alexandria at this point, are reputedly not a problem for us because they were angry with the Chinese. They were seeking to destroy the infidel Chinese. The problem is, those were the infidels at hand back home. They'll be happy to construe us as infidels here if they have us in their sights instead. So I just, I think the congressman's absolutely right. The burden of proof is not on us to say these guys won't be the dangerous terrorists pursuing the destruction of our society pursuant to Sharia. It's on the Bush, uh, excuse me, in this case now the Obama administration. Thank you for the question. Are there other questions?